Chinese investors want to own more real estate in the U.S. and Europe. U.S. investors want to own the right real estate in China. Tim Walsh is the former CIO for New Jersey State's pension fund. He is now the head of the U.S. office of Gaw Capital Partners. We talked about, well, just the trace of money going back and forth. If you're a teacher's pension fund in Korea or a teacher's pension fund in Kentucky, you have one thing in common, you've got to be diversified. And I think that's a global trend. It's been going on, but it's continuing as a trend. It's continuing in real estate, too. U.S. investors, in my opinion, are underinvested in Asia, and Asian investors are woefully underinvested in real estate around the world. So how do you reassure your clients that the deals are safe? I think it's based on performance. Uh, Gauz had, we just closed our fourth fund in uh, China right now. Uh, we're very close to closing it. We raised over a billion dollars. And uh, very diverse investor base, the United States investors, uh, Asian investors, European investors. It's the, fourth, it's the fourth fund, too. They've actually done incredibly well, uh, very opportunistic. Uh, in, a, in a very smart group. U.S. institutional money, there's about 6 to 8 percent in real estate. The average al asset allocation. I think U U.S. public pension funds, for instance, which I came from, uh, New Jersey was a little bit lower than that, but I think the average was somewhere around 7 percent. And you're saying that in Asia, if you look at the counterparties, their institutional less. money, it's less than 2 percent. 1.7 percent, yeah, significantly lower. Okay. Europeans actually have also had historically more exposure to real estate as well. So that implies that as Asia grows, there are going to be more and more Asian investors looking for real estate deals here. I believe in the US. so. Uh, in, in Europe as well. They've actually been, uh, there's been some publicity here in the last uh, year or so about uh, Chinese investors buying in New York City. But if you look at it, they've actually been focusing a lot more in Europe. I think eventually as time comes on, they'll be focusing more. Is that just because United. Europe is cheaper right now? Uh, I think it's cheaper, liquid. I um, mean, the London market is like the Hong Kong and New York City markets, they're very liquid. You can actually do a transaction very quickly, scale, good leases. You know, the UK government, the UK country's been around for a long time. It's, it's sort of a, considered a safe. Uh, a safe investment area, just like New York City, the United States. One statistic that you gave me is that Asian office space is the only asset class right now out there anywhere in the world that is actually higher than the peak. And the when peak, we talk correct. about peak, yep. we talk pre-credit crisis, so mm -hmm. 2006, early 2007. Correct. The only one. So what does that say about the future capital flows? Well, for U.S. investors, for instance, they, they haven't had much exposure to it. You know, we look at two things. They look at diversification and they look at risk-adjusted returns. So you have actually would have done better in, you know, the overseas, the, the China real estate market, for instance, or the Singapore real estate market than you would have done here in the United States over the last, since the crisis. I think 2007 was the peak. So there are then U.S. investors who feel like we should have been on this five years ago, but better late than never. Well, so would like exactly, to and some have been there. Yeah, you know, we've had uh, God's had investors I think for, since uh, pre pre crisis U.S. investors, but if you look at U.S. investors as a whole, in my opinion, they're sort of uh, under allocated to Asian real estate, and you have Asian real estate uh, institutions that are under allocated to the United States. What are the questions you get all the time about investing in real estate in Asia? Um, in Asia, it's you know how it works. It's just different from the United States. You could you could actually buy a building here in downtown New York City, uh, in, a, in a fast in a quick fashion in maybe six weeks, due diligence, et cetera, financing, optimistically. In China, in Asia, it takes a lot longer. You know, six months is not a um, a typical time to actually complete a transaction. Sometimes longer. It's just a, it's just a difficult. It's a it's a different process. If uh, Asian institutions start increasing their exposure from 1.7 percent to 2.5 percent, somewhere around there, over the next five years, that's about 150 billion dollars in equity that'll go into the global real estate market. You know where it ends up being parked, whether it's the United States or Asia or Europe, who knows? But that's 150 billion in equity, and obviously. You know, um, when you put equity into a building or into an industrial piece of property, you usually leverage that up X amount of time. So take $150 billion times a multiple of three, et cetera, you're talking a substantial amount of money that's probably going to be coming from overseas to various parts of uh, real estate around the world.